In an age of food photography saturation on platforms like Instagram, GIFs are an extremely fun and engaging way to spice up your food photography content. So if you wanna get in on the food photography GIF action, but you're unsure where to start, then this video for creating food photography GIFs is for you. Today's video is kindly sponsored by my friends over at Skillshare, and I'll be back to tell you a little bit more about them later on in the video. Okay, so the first step is photography gifts always work out best when we pre-visualize them a bit and make a little bit of a plan. So the main things that you wanna consider somewhat obviously is what movement you are trying to capture. It doesn't need to be anything over the top. We're gonna to look at two different GIF examples in this video. It could be as simple as some steam coming off a soup, pouring a drink, but knowing what you're trying to capture in advance will help you better set up the camera and capture some great shots. There are two quite different approaches you can take to shooting GIFs. The first method is essentially the same as producing a stop motion animation. So here you set up the first shot, take a frame, then change the setup slightly, take another shot and so on until inch by inch you've created a fluid and natural looking movement once the sequence is viewed at high speed. The alternative is to capture some action in real time and this will give you a little bit more of a fluid and realistic motion that looks almost like a video clip. In order to do this though, you're gonna need a camera with a fast continuous shooting rate. Regular video usually has a frame rate of between 24 and 60 frames per second and GIFs are usually less than 20 frames per second. And this is where a camera with a very fast burst shooting rate can really be an asset. You set the action in motion and fire off a rapid volley of frames that last for a few seconds, job done. So once you've got your basic idea of how you want your photography GIF to look and you've decided on a technical approach, it can pay to divide up the action into sections and then carefully consider how long each section should be. The reason for this is that you'll want to be sure to shoot enough frames for each section so as to create a smooth enough movement and a long enough sequence. Too many frames and the GIF will either be too slow or too long, too few frames and it will either be too short or too too jerky, maybe even both. <laughs> and keep in mind that if a sequence is too jerky due to a lack of frames, you can't easily go back later and shoot more images to add to the sequence. So for that reason, it's probably better to shoot a lot more photos than you think you're gonna need and then remove extra images if you find that you have too many. In some cases, you might wanna storyboard your food photography GIF beforehand, showing the separate sections and allocating a specific number of frames to each of them, or you might just wanna go with the flow. Over time, you'll kind of figure out how you like to do this. There's no right or wrong, but storyboarding can help in the beginning. So let's talk about camera modes. So while I always encourage new food photographers to get used to shooting in manual exposure mode as soon as possible, I know that it can sometimes be a bit confusing for total beginners. But when it comes to shooting GIFs, you really are gonna have to face up to the challenge and go fully manual. There's not really any way around it. Otherwise, you risk ending up with variations in exposure between each image in your sequence. This would create kind of a flickering effect once it turned into a GIF and it would be a real nuisance to fix in Photoshop if it even can be fixed at all. If you wanna learn more about manual mode, then I've linked my free five-day e-course manual mode essentials in the description, or you can click right up here to go directly to the course. So there are two possible approaches to focus when shooting food photography GIFs. Which of the two you should take really depends on the subject matter and the kind of GIF you want to produce. If you're shooting a subject at fixed distance, you may find it best to set the focus manually. That way the focus stays locked on the subject and there's no risk of the focus point shifting between shots due to erratic autofocus. However, if you're shooting some kind of rapid action like chopping or pouring or serving, autofocus might provide better results. If you're in doubt, run a test and check every frame, frame for focus first and see which mode suits your GIF better. If your food photography GIF sequence involves some kind of action, and as we've already noted, it probably should, then you'll likely want to freeze this action sharply to avoid motion blur. So you're gonna to need to be working with a sufficiently fast shutter speed. Just like all the other points that we've talked about so far, try a few test shots before deciding on your shutter speed and setting for your GIF. And be sure to zoom in to check that the images really are sharp 
even close up. Although gifts are by nature a little lo-fi, you probably don't want your hero dish wobbling around due to unintentional variation in camera position. So for the most part, you should probably shoot your food photography gifts with the camera mounted firmly on a tripod. This is gonna help you avoid a lot of very tedious work in post-production, trying to align a bunch of shots that were all shot from a slightly different position. Naturally, there is an exception to this rule when your GIF involves a deliberately moving camera. So if you're panning around a subject or you're zooming in and out or following an action, then obviously you're not gonna to wanna to be on a tripod. So here you'll either wanna be shooting handheld if you have a really sturdy grip or a gimbal if you're feeling a bit more fancy. In terms of lighting setup, the right kind of lighting for a GIF, again, it depends on the kind of GIF you're making. You can definitely use flash if you're trying to capture a movement. But if you're trying to capture something with a lot of frames happening in really quick succession, you might find yourself a bit limited if the recycle time on your flash isn't able to keep up. In that case, any kind of continuous light, whether that's artificial or natural, might work better. For today's gifts, I'm gonna show you how I put together these series of images for this ginger fizz cocktail and a more stop motion style noodle soup gif. I took all of these images using flash as I didn't need to capture them particularly close together. In the drink, I just wanted to show the bubbly effect. And for the noodle soup, I kind of moved everything quite slowly between the frames. So before we jump into putting these gifts together, let me tell you a little bit more about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with literally thousands of classes to help you expand your creative skills in areas like illustration, graphic design, photography, and so much more. It is the perfect platform for lifelong learners like me who are always looking to learn something new. Recently, I've been focusing on improving my drinks photography, and as part of that, I've been taking a class by Ivy Mix, great name for a cocktail class, all about cocktail secrets. There is so much to learn about professional cocktail making. It is so much more than just putting different ingredients into a shaker and mixing. There are so many different techniques and it's been something that I've really enjoyed diving into as I shoot more cocktails in my work too. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. So the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity and learn something new. Let's dive in to turning these images into a GIF. Okay, so for this tutorial, we're gonna be putting together two different GIFs. So I'm gonna start in Lightroom. So I've taken my images, imported them into a collection, and for this first example, which is a fizzy drink, we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 different images. So the first thing that I do is always start in Lightroom to do all of my color editing and all of those kinds of adjustments and make sure that every frame looks the same. So if we start on this first frame, I've already gone ahead and made all of the processing adjustments that I want. So you can see I've done a bit of work in the basic panel, a little bit of HSL work. I've done some sharpening some stuff in the lens corrections, etc. So the last thing that I'm gonna do before I sync these changes to all of the other frames is just get the crop I want. So this particular GIF, I wanna share it on Instagram. So I want it in the Instagram portrait aspect ratio, which is this four by five, eight by 10. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that. And then I'm gonna use the little preview window at the top to drag it around until I'm happy with the placement. So I think that looks good. So I'm gonna hit done. And there we go. So this is a frame I'm happy with the color and the position. So what I'm gonna do is with this first frame selected, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and then click to the end of the line and I'm gonna hit sync. Because I want everything that I've done to this image to be synced, I'm just gonna leave everything checked and hit synchronize. And that is gonna go ahead and populate. I think it's done now. So now as we go down the line, you'll see that each image has the same adjustments and the same crop, which is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and export these images into a folder. So I've already got them all selected. So I'm going to go file, export, and then I've actually already created a preset for Instagram feed video. So let's go ahead and rename this ginger cocktail fizz 
gif and then it's going to ask me to choose the folder layer but in terms of settings we've got it as a jpeg file format quality 100 resize to fit on the short edge which is this the bottom and the top edge of 1080 which means the side is going to be 1350 and that's it really so i'm going to hit export and then i've already created a folder called gif layers in the folder where i want them to be so i'm just going to create one more folder called ginger cocktail fizz because we're going to be doing another gif in a minute and then hit open and then lightroom's going to go ahead and export all of those frames okay so now i've got all of my jpegs which is going to be each layer of my gif exported we're going to head into photoshop and we're going to go file scripts and load files into stack and then it's going to ask me to browse so we're gonna go find our files and then we're gonna select all of them, hit open. And then I'm just gonna hit this sort by name button, which is just gonna make sure that they're all going in order, except for this one, which doesn't have a number. I'll show you how I fix that in a minute. And I'm gonna hit okay. So what this is gonna do is load each of these JPEGs into a separate layer in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna take this one, which is actually our first frame, but it doesn't have a number and put it at the top. So now you can see down the side, we've got lots of layers, each of our image. So what we need to do is toggle on the timeline at the bottom of Photoshop. So we're gonna go to window and select timeline. And this is gonna bring up our photo timeline. So let's hit the button create frame animation. And this is gonna pull in the first layer. So in order to pull in all of the rest, we're gonna hit the little hamburger here and select make frames from layers. There we go. So now we've got all of our frames loaded into our timeline. So if I just hit the play button now, it's gonna give me a preview of how this GIF is gonna look right now. So you can see at the moment, it's really, really fast and we might wanna slow it down a bit. So let's go ahead and select all our frames. So I'm gonna click on the first one, hold down shift and click on the last one. And then I'm gonna click the little drop down arrow at the bottom. And here you can either choose one of these pre-specified times, which is how long each frame will display before it moves on to the next one, or I can choose something completely custom. So I'm gonna start with 0.2, and as you can see, it's now applied that change to every frame. So let's hit play again and see how that looks. It's better, I'm not sure if it's a little bit too slow. Let's try 0.1 instead. So I'm gonna select them all again and select 0.1. That looks much more balanced to me. It's clear that this is a GIF. It's a little bit sort of lo-fi, like I said earlier, it doesn't look like a video, but it's sort of quick enough that it keeps it interesting. Down here, you do have the option to choose a loop mode. You can either just have your GIF play once or three times forever, or you can specify. I'm just gonna leave it on forever because wherever I put this, I just want it to keep playing again and again and again. So let's have a look at exporting this GIF. Now there are two ways that you can export a GIF. One is actually to a GIF format and one is to a video. So for this one, we're gonna do a GIF and then for the next example, I'll show you a video. So we're gonna choose file, export, and then hit save for web. And that's gonna bring up our little export window. And then we're gonna choose GIF up here. So if it's not already selected on GIF, just change the little drop down here. And then we have a few different modes. So GIF files in themselves can get really, really big really fast and they don't have as many colors as a raw file that you would then export to a jpeg so there's a process called dithering which sort of allows photoshop to bring back colors that it may have lost so in order to choose the gif export you can absolutely go ahead and customize everything here i actually really like using the four option so the four up window because that sort of gives me four previews of a gif and allows me to choose the one that has a good balance of looking good but also not being too big of a file size. So if we have a look, let's reposition them so we can actually see a bit of detail. There's not a huge amount of difference between these ones. I would say in this one, you really start to see particularly in this area where we've got a loss of color. So I'm not gonna go for that one, but I do think that 88% dither looks okay. So let's go with that and then hit save. And then let's go ahead and put that in the same folder. So I'm gonna call this ginger 
cocktail final and then save it. Okay, so to view our GIF, we can see that it's just finishing off its export here. So to view it, I'm just gonna right click and open with, and I'm gonna choose an internet browser. So if we go here, so as you can see, now we've got our final gift and it's gonna autoplay and just keep looping forever. So for this second more stop motion style gif, I'm gonna be building this noodle bowl and I'm gonna show you how to turn this one into a video. So the Lightroom steps are exactly the same. I've made sure that my crop and all of my changes are synced to every frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and export these frames. So for this one, because there is a very specific order that I want them to show in, I wanna make sure that Photoshop can load them in the correct order. So for the name, I am gonna choose custom name sequence and we're gonna make sure we start on number one and that's just going to mean that the layer is named like one two three four five so i'm going to go ahead and export those let's create a new folder called noodle bowl layers so that everything's gonna be in one folder and then hit export. Oh, you can see, look, it's me on my phone. <laughs> okay, so now we've got all of our noodle bowl layers. We're gonna do exactly the same thing in Photoshop. So we're gonna do file, scripts, load files into stack. We're gonna browse and this time we're just gonna head to that new folder for the noodle bowl layers and then we're gonna select everything again, open and we're gonna sort by name. And then now you can see because we specified that it should start at number one, we've got everything from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to layer 48. So this is quite a chunky GIF. So let's hit OK and let Photoshop go ahead and load all of these layers into our stop motion. So we already have our timeline window open. If you don't, just head to window and make sure that you've got timeline selected. So we're gonna go ahead and create our frame animation and then go to our hamburger and make frames from layers. What you can see it's done now is it's actually loaded everything backwards. So it will always start at the bottom layer and work up. So we actually want to reverse this because otherwise it's gonna look like a deconstructed noodle bowl rather than a constructed noodle bowl. So there's a very, very simple fix for that. We just simply come back to our hamburger and we say reverse frames. And then all that's going to do is flip it the whole other way. So now we're going to start with our empty bowls and build our noodle bowl, which is actually the effect that we're going for. So let's check out the speed again. Again, this is quite quick. So I do want to slow it down. So let's go ahead and select all our frames and let's start with 0.1 this time and see how that looks. I think that's actually already pretty good. I just am interested what 0.2 might look like. So let's change it to 0.2. Okay, I think that's a little bit too slow. So let's go ahead and change it back to 0.1. And there we go. So this time we're gonna render this as a video, which is more for things like Instagram. You would post a video maybe on your website, although you can post GIF formats on your website. So we're gonna go to File, Export, and then head down to Render Video. And this is gonna bring up our video export window. So because we already exported our images in the size that we already want, we don't need to do any resizing at this point, but if you have images that are bigger than the actual video size you want, you might need to play around with that here. So all I'm gonna do is rename this to noodlebowl.motion. And then I'm gonna select the destination of where I want Photoshop to put the final video once it's exported. So I'm gonna head to the same folder where the layers are. So let's just put it in here in the noodle bowl folder. You can choose to create a subfolder if you want to, that's completely up to you. And then let's have a quick look at settings. So in terms of format, H.264 is a good format for video, so I wouldn't change that. You can leave the preset on high quality or you can choose some of these presets. Like for example, if you know that you want an HD video at 24 frames per second, you can select that if you want 25, 29.97, etc. You can go ahead and choose the format you need. I'm just going to leave it on high quality. As I said, I'm not going to resize it because I already chose the video size when I exported my frames from Lightroom. That is basically it. I'm going to hit render 
and then it's going to go ahead and render that file. And with a video, it's not going to automatically loop. It's just going to play once and then stop. Depending on the video player that you embed it into when you upload it to where you want to use it, you may have the option to loop the video, but that does depend more on the video player rather than the file itself. Okay, so here we've got our final video that Photoshop has rendered for us. So if I'm just going to go ahead and open that, it's going to open in QuickTime Player. I can hit play and it's just going to play through once and then stop. So there we go. That is two ways that you can export and render GIFs. It's a super quick process. It doesn't really involve any heavy duty Photoshop work and it's a really fun way to add a bit of interest to your images. Thank you so much again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and don't forget to go sign up for my free five day manual mode course if you are interested in that and I will see you in the next video. But all of that, if you're shooting a subject. <laughs>